You are called to love, love and not fear. fear. Fear is not the will of God, and we, we established that yesterday. Because the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and the sound. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, I'm going to share with us, just I'm going to define, you know, what, what, fear, what fear is and what it does. So the first thing I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the idea that fear is an emotion that, that is triggered by a perceived danger or a threat. You know, when somebody perceives there's a danger, they are most likely going to be afraid. Isn't it? And then, and then, and then what it can actually then do, or how it manifests, it manifests as anxiety, worry, and panic. And those are deadly things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is why when you read the scriptures, the Bible tells us and it says, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. anxious. But in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Like a situation, you know, woman, you so. You know, you a situation. And you will worry. What you worried? What you stressed? And you forget that you can't worry at that time when you are here. I mean, I mean, you are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. You know, you can't prosper. Amen. There is no weapon that is fashioned against you that will prosper. So there is no need to be anxious. There is no need to be worried. Because whatever weapon that has been fashioned is going to Yes. Yes. Imagine when you begin to think about it, to say what it's going to fail. Mm. It's not going to succeed. Mm. Whatever it is, is going to fail. In other words, it should just give you one big smile. Like a problem presents itself, you won't win it at all. Because you will show the money I do good win. Life, it will have 
which would have negative effects. And some of the effects is that a person can become, uh, the effects can be mental, the effects can also be emotional, and the effects can be spiritual. Because when I which cars, no matter, no matter who you purchase, like who you wear, and no matter the car, no matter the set, I should have no which car. Because one more hour, one hour we can move. I said I don't want to change them, but if I don't want to change them, I won't be going to change them back. Change them back, but if you want to change, you need cancer. Move on, get a foot. Get a leg, get a leg, get a car. You know, open up, open up, go. But change them back. Jesus Christ is. Yes. 
Amen. And how great he is and how 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 magnanimous he is. Amen. Spend your time telling people about Christ. Mm. Because guess what? When you take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we'll come in, uh, in Romans. Romans 1, verse 68, 17, they're about. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Mm. Would you like to experience the power of God in your life? Yes. The only way you experience God's power is when you share his gospel. Mm. Share the word of God with somebody else. In other words, do not spend time being intimidated. Do not spend time worrying. Do not spend time stressing. Spend time speaking about the goodness of God. Amen. Spend time talking about the goodness of God. Like there's some people who, you know, like, because Zimbabwe is a very interesting environment, you can find out that maybe only the wife is the one that goes to work. Or you find out that, you know, there's not even any other source of income in the house. And because of that, the woman gets so stressed because she's carrying the entire burden for the whole family. But the thing she's forgetting is that she's not the one carrying the burden. It is God. It is God. And as much as she thinks she's the provider, she thinks she's the one meeting the needs of the family, you're not the one meeting the needs of the family. It's God. Like if anything, people should get into a mode of thanksgiving. Like, thank God, like, God, I am so grateful. I have a job and I'm able to provide for my family. But I know that it is not me doing it, it is you doing it through me. Yes. Just be grateful to God. Yes. Because Amen. Amen. He's the one that enables us. And he's the one that causes us to, to excel, causes us to succeed, and causes us to do extremely well in whichever respect when we do. So when you then look at it carefully, you realize that fear can prevent us from pursuing our dreams, taking risks, and stepping out in faith. And you've got to refuse, isn't it? To mm -hmm. say, I will take a risk. And I will take, take a risk. I will pursue my dreams. And I will step out in faith. Mm. You've got to, you've got to do those things. Do not be limited. Refuse to be limited. Do not let anyone put you in a container mm. and contain you and say you can never achieve this in your lifetime. Mm. You tell them that this is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. Mm. That I will succeed. Mm. I will achieve my goals. Mm. And the risk I take, I will be fruitful. Mm. Amen. Amen. You tell yourself that I'll be fruitful. I'll be fruitful. I'll be fruitful. So never find yourself in a place of worry, in a place of stress, in a place where you're wondering if things are going to work. Tell yourself that things are going to work. Amen. Amen. Tell yourself that things are going to work. So in the Bible, in the Bible we have examples of stories where people feared. So the other thing that fear also does is that fear can mess up your relationship with God. So here in the book of Genesis chapter 3, we have Adam and Eve where, you know, they were afraid because they had sinned, so they hid themselves from God. Do you know that there are some people who will not go to church? simply because they are afraid, isn't it? And they look at everybody else who goes to church as a hypocrite. As far as they're concerned, anybody who goes to church is a hypocrite. Because of like, you bunch of sinners, why are you going to church? But when you look at it very carefully, you realize that the church is like a hospital. That's where sick people go. And that's what the church is. The church is a hospital. That's where sick people go. So if anybody ever calls you a hypocrite because of something, nothing. <laughs> 
the dawa au kutiswe na picha ya men of god mumba ai kutise mun kino kutisa mun kimwani ukaongonora shoko rino tsora ino shiti greater is he that is in you than he that is in the
must be reminded. Kuta ausiweka. Very poor Very poor. And now King David then says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. I'm not worried about God being absent. He is right there with me. He is right there with me. Regardless of how I may be feeling, God is right there with me. Can be in the face of loss. God is right there with me. Aripo, Amen. He won't leave me and he won't forsake me. He's right there with me. Praise God, man. Amen. Amen. So in closing, I'll share this story. And this is the story uh, when Jesus walked on water. It's a very familiar story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Found in Matthew chapter 14, from verse 22 to, to 33. So in this particular portion of script, uh, story, we realize that Jesus walked on water. And when his disciples saw him, when they were in the port, they were afraid and they thought he must have been a ghost. They were terrified. They thought he was a ghost. But he reassured them that he was not a ghost. And he told them to take courage, and he said, it is I. In other words, uh, when you look at carefully, you see that he told Peter, don't be afraid. Then Peter stepped out of the boat. And as long as his focus was on Jesus, guess what? He was walking on water. <laughs> His focus was on Jesus. And because his focus was on Jesus, he was able to walk on water. And then the wind came. And his focus was taken from Jesus. And he became afraid. And immediately he began to sing. When you take your focus off Jesus, immediately you will begin to sink. But Jesus didn't leave him to sing. He stretched out his hand and he rescued him. Amen. Amen. He stretched out his hand and he rescued him. So one of the things that we need in life is that we need Jesus to help us overcome most of the challenges and the difficulties we might go through in this life. Therefore, we will focus on nothing else but Jesus. Amen? Amen. We're not going to focus on the situation. We're going to focus on Jesus. Jesus. In other words, you're going to look like you mad because you're supposed to be sad and yet there is a smile on your face. Simply because you are not focusing on the challenge. You are focusing on the one who solves the challenge. You're focusing on the one who fixes challenges. You tell yourself that he fights every one of my battles. You tell yourself that he provides for every one of my needs. And when he does that, guess what? In closing, he gives you peace. Imagine when you're thinking of God providing for every one of your needs, you're going to be at peace, isn't it? When you're thinking of God fighting every one of your battles, guess what? You're going to be at peace. See, when you're thinking of God being forever present, Jehovah Shalom, when you think of him as the one who is forever present, guess what? You're going to have peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Jehovah Shalom, forever present. And guess what? You're going to have peace. When you just know him as the one who is forever there, he is there. And he is never caught by surprise. God is never caught by surprise. There's nothing that surprises God in this world. Nothing. He sees it all. He knows it all. And he knows what is happening in your life. And remember, remember what I said yesterday? I, just, I gave this just as a topic of something that I wish to talk about at some point. Um, I don't know if I'll talk about it this week. 
maybe I'll talk about it whenever I get another opportunity, which is that life is rigged in your favor. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Life is rigged in your favor. Mm -hmm. Nothing to be worried about. You're going to come out and come out victorious. You will be on the top of the game regardless of what may be happening. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So because of our time, uh, I should end here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dr. Dama, I need to pray for you. Hallelujah. Amen. In the past, I've been zippo. Do not focus on the situation. But focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. focus on the situation. focus on the situation. Every time Jesus focus on the Hallelujah. He should go to the the